So what do you do when you own too many cars and you don't want to get rid of any of them? You put them in the hands of people who can do stuff with them and put them to work. And that's what's happening right now. That empty spot right there is where Slaghammer was hatched. Well, she was actually hatched at the old shop. But this is where she got finished. And now she's in the hands of Mopar Al and he's taking her out on Power Tour. I think they're leaving this Sunday. So, and then from there, I believe he's going to take it to the track a couple of times, and then he's going to bring it to the no-name nationals. So, that's the thing. You have to find the right people for the right jobs. And Mo Parral was the right person for that job. I was, I, this is going back about seven months ago, when I was looking at this thing, I'm like, I just don't have the will to do anything with this. I don't have the, don't have the will to finish it, but I really want it finished. So, I brought Mo Parral, and I says, listen, bro, I'll do the motor and the trans and do all that stuff. You finish up the detailing on the car, right? And then take it. Go do what you got to do. And when you finish with it, just bring it back. So that's what's happening right now. Mo Parello is out in the world making stuff happen. Now, also, we've got Stuby, my old, my old Stuby. I don't even know what to call him. I've known Stuby for about 20 years now. Stuby uh, used to hang out at one of my coffee houses when I first moved to Tennessee. So that's how I got to know him. And then he went to school to be a mechanic. He went to some trade school or whatever it was. And uh, I had a shop. So he says, Stuby, come on, come to work. So he worked for me for a while over at the old shop. And uh, now he's, he's not working for me, but I'm putting him to work, right? Same way we did with Mopar Al. So we're, this car right here, you know this one. This is our 67 GT. This is our daily driver for, oh God, about two years. Right, put a lot of miles on this car. Runs really good. It's got a 273 in it. And if you remember, Mopar Al and I did a uh, vapor system test on this car earlier this year. So here's what's going on with Stuby. We've got his Slant 6 Valiant, which is now turning into a turbo build. We're building a turbo. And here's his, uh, here's his block. And we're going to tear this thing down. It's gonna need, it's gonna need everything. I know that already, but we're gonna tear it down. We'll do a video on that. So this is, well, as long as this, as long as this car and this project is gonna be around for a while, let's, let's get Stuby involved in something else. So this way we can keep the wheels turning. And that's what we're doing with the GT. So right now, um, we're fixing oil leaks and taking care of some odds and ends that this car needs. He's swapping out the oil can here. We're, uh, we're going to bring it up to snuff. Stuby's going to start using this as like a daily driver. And in the course of doing that, we're going to do some experiments. Uh, we're going to do some experiments in the name of fuel mileage. Fuel mileage is really important right now. Last night, <laughs> you, know, you, can't, you can't make this stuff up. Gas goes up 20, 30, 40 cents a gallon like overnight. And last night here, it did it, it did it right here. And we're way below the average. I know in some parts of California, it's up at seven, eight bucks a gallon. So, and heading higher, and it is gonna get much higher. So things like fuel economy and drivability and all that are, are gonna be, become more important in the near future than overall performance. And we're ready to pivot, we're ready to shift gears. And I'll get to that in a minute. But anyway, that's what's going on with this. Stuby is, uh, is, is, is beating the little things, the little bugs out of this car. And uh, we'll, we'll have some comparison. We'll have some, some longer range, longer term mileage experiments. And, uh, you know, because the last one we did, like the vapor experiment, we just did a quick around the block over here. But now that we'll be putting this car into daily driver service with Stuby, we'll be able to do more things that last for a longer period of time and we can gauge results on a on a on a, 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 a more practical than just running around the shop a few times a more practical basis so fuel mileage okay uh, again see a tough video to do like the one we did with the uh, like the one we did with that that Pontiac Tough video to do because there are certain things we can't say. There are certain you know, because you know the, of this system. Okay, so there are certain words and certain phrases that will get us flagged, shadow banned, not good. Okay, but I got to talk about this stuff.
anyway, because it affects all of us, and it affects directly affects our hobby, our sport, our, our lifestyle, you know, the mechanical lifestyle. So, all right, let's 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 do it this way. Okay, I think that the vast majority of you guys are of the same basic mindset that I am, uh, meaning the birds of a feather flock together, right? So, I'll say something. I'll, I'm going to say something now, and I'm sure that you're going to relate to it. I'm sure a, a big portion of you guys are going to relate to it. All right. I was born with a basic distrust of the system. Okay, process that for a minute, okay? Does this apply to you? Do you feel the same way? I was born with a basic distrust of the system, meaning that as I was a kid growing up, I looked at all of the institutions that I was exposed to or, or forced into, all of the programs and systems that I was forced into, the box, and I don't trust any of this. This is all wrong. It's all bogus. There's something wrong here. And I went through life with this in the back of my head. And to this day, still, right, more so than ever, I have that same feeling. I don't trust the system. I don't trust any of the systems. Through the course of my life, things happened. Um, and again, see, so be careful what you say and how you say it, because it's the new reality, right? Um, 1987, October of 1987. Uh, yeah, I was I was I was a, a young, freezed street racer, magazine journalist, and at the time, investing in the market was over the top. So I took some of the the extra cash that I was generating at the time, and I put it in the market, and lost it. And I was like, I was expecting to lose that, right? No, nobody, nobody, nobody goes into the market expecting to lose money. I went into the market literally expecting to lose money. So I got in at about August, and then in October, we know what happened, right? And then immediately after that, they brought out the plunge protection team, right? I, think, I guess I could say that without running into the, uh, the algorithm, you know, the, the, the boogeyman, right? They came out with the plunge protection team. So... Up until that point, I remember you guys who are, who are younger, you've grown up in a system that's that's like completely perverse. But back then, it was like the free markets. You know what I mean? It's like you're in the free market and things are supposed to function on a fair basis. But once they brought in, after that incident, and they brought in the plunge protection team, it was like, obviously, it's not a fair market. It's obviously rigged. <laughs> then they're coming right out and telling you, yes, this is rigged. I stopped trusting money. Okay, where I stopped trusting currency. I stopped trusting markets directly and I avoided them ever since. So let's fast forward a bunch of years. I go off and I do nitro thing, I do more magazine stuff, and I do everything else. And I and and I'm learning and I'm absorbing and I'm building on this foundation of distrust of the system and I'm learning as much as I can. And then certain events happened in September. Actually, they happened literally in my backyard. Certain things happened in September of 2000. Those events weren't unexpected. And the way they were handled, the way they were handled showed me that now not only are the government, aren't the markets to be trusted, but the government and the media is not to be trusted either. So with that, I says, okay, you know, the fuse is lit. Things are going to happen. And I made all of my preps, okay? And I moved this. I got myself out of New York City, and I moved to Nashville, Tennessee, and I said, this is where we're going to ride it out. So things came and went. You know, there's an ebb and flow to everything, right? Rise and a fall, rise and a fall, peak and a valley, peak and a valley, right? And slowly over the last 20 years since I've been here in Tennessee, uh, the, uh, the, the, the level of craziness has increased, the level of stability has decreased, so it's, a, it's, you know, it's always on its way up, right? The level of crazy is always on its way up, and right now we're in maximum crazy, okay? When things happened in March of 2020, so again, just like things that happened in September of 01, 
It wasn't unexpected. I knew exactly what was happening. I knew exactly what was going on. And from that point, we've been doing this channel and we've been, we've been maintaining normal, right? But in the meantime, I've also been um, planning, you know, to, to move to the next steps, to, 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 uh, to keep going in the face of things that I know are coming, things that I know are happening. Now, I'll, I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. So when that happened in March, and I knew what the next steps were gonna be, I started making mental preparations. I have, my head has not been into cars. My head has been more into the events of the world. And now kind of the events of the world as they apply to cars. Machines in general. So about a, a year ago or so, not even, you know, just about a year ago, my instincts told me, okay, start going back to the two wheelers. Start because, because things are going to get really crazy really soon. And the energy and transportation parts of the world are the ones that are going to be directly attacked. So start working your way in back into the two wheel thing and start looking at alternatives to what's currently going on. But in the meantime, still keep doing builds. Do the slag hammer, you know, we're, we're working on bottle rocket now. We've got all of these cars, we're going to keep going, right? Um, so about 10 years ago, or thereabouts, I have a friend, his name is Brian Loans. I, don't, I haven't talked to him lately. He's, a, he's an, an announcer for the NHRA. And, uh, but he was doing a, a thing called bangshift.com. And we got together, and, and this is, like I said, this is 10 years ago. And this, this, the subject of this thing we worked on was called post-apocalyptic hot rodding. Okay? Because I, and I said to him, I says, listen, we're going to run into a huge, we're going to run into a major societal collapse. It is all planned. It's all baked in the cake. It's going to happen. The, the collapse of the dollar is a mathematical certainty. Like, you can't get around this. And says, but you know what? No matter what happens, I'm still going to play with my hot rods. I'm still going to burn rubber. I'm still going to build engines. I'm gonna, and this is how I'm going to do it. And I, and I, I laid out to him, and, and we, did a, we did a thing on Bang Shift about this. I don't know if it's still up or not. But I, I laid out to him how, yeah, that's why I work with mostly stock parts because I don't trust the aftermarket because those companies can go just like that and, you know, you're left, your project is left high and dry. And so I like to stick with basically stock or, or very easily to come by, um, easy to come by uh, uh, basic parts. I modify them to my, to my purpose rather than just go out and blindly buy whatever aftermarket thing there is and become a slave to that piece or a slave to that manufacturer. And that's why I'm such a stickler for things like factory ignitions, factory types of intakes, factory carburetors, points, right? That's why I'm so nutty about that. That's why I don't mess with like front end parts or uh, accessory drive, aftermarket accessory drives or anything like that. I try to keep my cars completely assembled out of 100% common available bits and pieces. This is the method to my madness. If you guys have been watching this channel now for the last four years or so, and you're like, you know, okay, he's got some pretty strange ideas. He's got some pretty crazy ways of doing things. No, what's happening right now in the world and what is about to happen in the world is exactly why I do the things that I do, the way that I do them. And we go back to like birds of a feather flocking together, right? I know a lot of you guys who are watching this right now know that. You're relating to that, right? You get that. All right. And that's why I, I do things in the fashion that I do them. Um, <sighs> methods to my madness. So, what do you got to do? Um, so, my prediction is this. My, my, and, 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 you know, it, I hate to make predictions. predictions. Predictions never end up well because people will hold you, your feet to the fire. And I'll say, well, it, you know, the world didn't end on, on January 12, 2012, or whatever it was, right? Whatever, whatever the date was for the Mayan end of the calendar. You know, nothing went completely berserk on Y2K, right? Yeah, so I, I don't make predictions. You know, you, you can't make predictions. You can only make, you can only make uh, educated guesses. And my educated guess is that sometime 
during this summer, this coming summer, we're in June right now, sometime within the next 90 days or so, the system is going to lock up, okay? The system is going to lock up. I believe it's the banking system that's going to fail. I believe it's the dollar system that's going to fail. They've already set up the whole premise with food shortages, fuel shortages, this shortage, that shortage. Trucking companies right now are going out of business as fast as they, and like, like literally, man, they just, they just close the door, that's it, done, right? It's all happening right now. The cost of fuel, the cost of the shortages of, of the nonsense, the, 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 the DEF, all of that, right? It's all forcing these trucking companies to just done, pulling a plug. The wheels are set in motion. A full-blown collapse is absolutely inevitable. It will happen. Will it happen this summer? I think it'll happen this summer. Can it go on for six months? Can it go on for a year? Possibly. But I believe the banking, the banking system, the dollar system, the housing market, which has been the, the biggest you know, aspect, you know, the, the biggest driver of everything, the bubble, it's a, it's a 50 year bubble. Housing is in a 50 year bubble. <sighs> crazy, ugly things are, are in the process of happening, but they're not so, they're crazy, but they're not so ugly if you're prepared for it. I am very prepared for it. Um, and I'm becoming more prepared for it. And, you know, obviously, there's, there's the usual stuff, you know. Yeah, have some metal put aside. Have some protection. Have some uh, food put aside. All of those things. Common sense things. Common sense things. Because even, even just to get past a, a, a short period of time where things aren't available, you know what I mean? You want to be able to eat. You don't want to, you know what I mean? If there's a little craziness happening, you want to be able to protect your homestead, right? You, so, so... The normal preps are a good thing, but I'm prepping because I plan on building cars and having fun and riding my motorcycles and and being an asset to my family, to my friends and my community as things go run off the rails. If you're watching this, guys, and you've stuck with me this long, really start doing your homework. The time is very short and then again maybe i'm wrong and it's all completely normal everything's normal right but if i'm right time is very very short start educating yourself i'm gonna i'm gonna give you a couple of channels okay so here's a couple of channels that um i think i think are, are uh mm, i don't agree with everything these guys say i i definitely don't but i i watch each of them and i enjoy each of them um because they all have a, a pretty accurate perspective on what's going on um in no particular order and I've mentioned this guy before, Dan from I Allegedly. Great channel, great channel. What I love about Dan is that he, he strolls through these multi, multi-million dollar uh, California, you know, seaside neighborhoods and talks about collapse, right? There's, there's people playing volleyball behind him and doing yoga classes, and he's like, it's coming to an end. It's coming to an end right away. Um, so, yeah, that's Dan. Great guy, right? Share your thoughts. Um, Jeremiah Babe, this, this guy is like Mr. Doom, Mr. Doom, he's like Dr. Doom, but you know what, he's right, he's right, okay? You might want to check him out. There's a guy named the Economic Ninja. He posts you know, usually two, three videos a day. This guy's on top of stuff, okay? He's on top of stuff, and he stays on top of stuff, so he might be somebody you want to watch. Um, Scott Walters, he's a real estate guy, right? He's got the neatest hair on YouTube. Um, you might want to check him out. He's a real estate guy. He's calling for a complete real estate collapse. Um, he, like, in other words, like he's a real, he's, 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 he's in the business. And he's like, nope, okay, you don't want to be in this business. Uh, and Johnny Bravo, Jay Bravo, you might watch this guy too. Especially if you're interested in the markets and you're interested in perhaps swing trading and all of that. Jay Bravo is a great channel. I, uh, I, I watch him on a regular basis. Um, very, I, I, I enjoy everything these guys do. And that's why I'm throwing them out. And uh, Pitara from Appalachian Homestead. Okay, she's another one. I, she, they, she's just so uh, earthy, okay? You might want to check her out if, if you're, if you're, uh, if you're, if you're, if you're, you're grassroots, you know, prep-minded, right? You might want to, you might want to watch her. There's a bunch of other channels also. And I'm not going to get into the channels and talk about things like, you know, 
conspiracies, you know, because, uh, you know, I'm one of those people. I, you know what I mean? I'm, make no mistake about it. You know, when you talk about the tinfoil hat guys, I am one of them. My tinfoil hat is chrome plated. Okay. You know, so let's see if I'm right about all of this stuff too, as we go along. So one of the things that I'm doing, I'm a businessman. I've always been a businessman. I got thrown out of school when I was 16 years old and I went right to work. Right. I says, you know, uh, job is slavery. You know, I'm, I am not, I will never have a job. I will never be a slave. And so I've kept myself debt free and I've kept myself job free. I'm 60 years old now. As far as I'm concerned, if the earth was to open up right now and swallow me up, I won. I won the game. I, I you know, I got it. I passed go. I got my 200 bucks, right? So I'm all good with that. But still have years to go and we still have the current realities to deal with. So in addition to the hot rods and the race cars, and I have no idea if this stuff is even going to be viable, if, it's all, if any of it's going to be usable, at least for the, in, the, in the near future. I mean, eventually things reach a new normal and you go from there. But I'm also getting into, in addition to bikes, scooters. This is, a, this is a Yamaha Raz I picked up for 20 bucks. I'm basically dissecting it, trying to figure out what's what with it. It's, it's been through a few hands and much, much abuse, but, um, and, I, I'm, and I'm not going to load, I'm not going to put scooter stuff on this channel, right, because I know that's really far off from where our, our, our economic, our, our uh, viewer base is, but from a business perspective, I am getting into the scooter business, scooters, uh, even things like motorized bicycles and whatnot, you know, I mean, that's all to be seen. But yeah, I see the trend. I see how things are going. I know what has to be. And I'm getting into the scooter business. So, guys, right? I guess if you stuck with me this long, you know what I mean? I hope you got something out of this. Do your homework, okay? Things are happening now that have never in the history of this planet, in the history of civilization, have ever, or at least that we know of, that have never happened before in our recorded history. Okay, things like this have never happened before. This is, this is, this is big, okay? It's going down. Um, start learning, educate yourself. We're gonna beat this thing. We're gonna come out on top. Trust me on that, okay? I'll see you tomorrow.